Okay, before we go any farther into this video, I need you, if you've watched, especially if you've watched more than one of these and you've come back, I need you to go and subscribe to this channel. YouTube has changed your partner status, so I can't make any money off of my channel until my subscribers get up to a thousand. So I need you to subscribe to this channel. So thanks a lot for doing that. If you have any questions about that, let me know. But let's get on with the video. What's up? I'm the Zim. This is the Zim video. This is part 48 of my ride share experience video series. I'm an artist musician from Seattle, Washington. And for the last year, I've been driving Lyft as my primary source of income while I'm figuring my stuff out, which is going back to grad school or going to grad school. That's what it seems like it's going to be happening soon. So real quick on the top, um, if any of you have been kind of keeping track, I've been saying I'm not going to do these anymore, which I changed my mind because I got enough response from you saying you wanted me to keep doing them. So I will keep doing them. And since I basically think I have about a year left of full time driving, might as well play it out through the next year. I might not hit it every week, but most weeks I'll hit it. But I need you to comment and let me know what you want me to talk about because I've already addressed a bunch of topics. I can address some topics again, but if there's anything that you want me to um, talk about based on my experience as a Lyft driver, I'd love to do that, but you gotta be a part of this conversation. So you gotta start commenting on what you want to hear and just different ideas. And I might decipher something off of what you say, even if you don't know what it is, but just comment and let me know what's going down. Um, as well, I made a one year kind of review slash, you know, why I drive for Lyft video. I'll post it in the description of this. So check it out. Um, if you haven't checked it out yet, that'd be awesome. And then like I like to do, uh, I like to do shout outs. So I do shout outs, uh, how much I made, my star rating, and then my main topic. And as you see over there, there's three squares that denote where we are in the video. So if you want to skip ahead to the main topic or one part of it, just slide your timeline or in the description of this, in the desktop version, you can click the timestamp and it'll take you directly to the time of what's going down. But I like to do shout outs and it's been a while so I might repeat a couple of shout outs. I don't know since I've done shout outs. So I like to shout out people that have been engaging on the rideshare videos because it's the videos I get the most engagement off of on this channel. So thank you a lot for doing that. But Mark Schwartz, Justin Riddle 3 Andrew Brissonos, uh, Patty G, James Harris, Brian Tinsley. All of you thanks a lot for engaging. In the channel, new engagers, of course, there's been people that engage that have engaged that I've already shouted out to. Anyways, that's what I do. So let's get into how much I made. I can't snap. Why can't I snap? But um, how much I made this week is 808, around $808 was deposited in my account. You can see, you'll, you'll see the exact amount. I'm doing this again before Lyft has finished their process. I do drive in the Express Drive program, so that means after I get the all the bonuses and stuff, Lyft still takes $25 out of what I make um, because of the cost of the rental. So when they do their math, it's roughly 20, it's like $25.32 or something like that. But um, anyways, somewhere around $808 was deposited. I made somewhere around $15 in cash chips. I forgot to track it accurately because when I go through my car wash, um, place that I do, I, I pay monthly, $20 a month for unlimited car washes, I usually just go once a week, and they have a little sign that says tips are appreciated, and I don't tend to tip very much, but I just um, was like I need to catch up kind of in a way on my tipping, and so I just grabbed all my cash that I had in that moment from tips that I got and just gave it to them, and it, I think it might have been like between five and eight dollars or so, I don't even know. I just grabbed it and gave it to him, didn't count it or anything. But I'm just saying it was five dollars for the sake of this video. So, because I know I got another ten dollars in cash tips, so I put fifteen dollars in cash tips. It was what I made as well. So, in the tip total and in the you know, dep not deposit total, but what I made this week total, it's somewhere around eight hundred and twenty three dollars up in the heads up display, and then my tip total is ninety nine dollars in the heads up display. So that's what's going on there. Um, anyways, let's go into the, um, it's been a while since I've done this, uh, the daily breakdown. There it is. The daily breakdown. Um, 
And I did, it was pretty good. I worked Monday, Wednesday through Sunday and got a couple of days that I almost hit 200. And the cool part about what happened for me this week was I was managed to make this amount of money in 40, about 44 hours, which is pretty not normal for me. So it was great. This is what I wish it was more like. If it was like this, at least this good, pretty much every week, if I could count on it being like this every week, I would feel a lot better about this job. But I can't count on it being this like this every week, which is unfortunate. So that's what's going on. Let's do the um, the hourly breakdown. And um, this is where you can see where I drove this week. It's always, it's, this has been my, pretty much my standard. I had a little bit of a interesting week on both Saturday and Sunday. I took a big chunk of time out um, and broke it up, which I don't normally do on Saturdays. Normally Saturdays and Sundays I work straight through, but just life required me to do it that way this time. So that's what happened there. Let's get into the star rating. It's taking me two snaps every time to get a good snap. Um, so I just let the star rating scroll by with my daily emails that I get. Um, and I did all right this week. I was up at five, the 5.0 app rating at times and 4.9 and 5.0. It was like just fluctuating all week this week. I think I ended the week with 4.9. I think it's 4.94. So on my app it says 4.9. So that's what's going on there. I'm just going to let that scroll through. Nothing really eventful that I can think of happened in the, the realm of my ratings. Uh, yeah, nothing I can think of. So hopefully, well, I'll just let it scroll out as it goes on. And then um, let's talk about the main topic. So a couple weeks ago, I had um, somebody ask me on in the comments, one of you asked me about what I play for music in the car. And as you know, um, they change on the on the app. They change when you get your bulk reviews. It used to say music. It used to say something about was well, good music or something like that. And I never got kudos for music. Every once in a while, somebody gave me a kudo for music, but not to the degree of what I got kudos for. And I always have music playing. So you know, so t this is what I do with for music in the car. You can just take it with a grain of salt because I. Never got kudos. I've watched other people's YouTube videos about um, ride sharing, and one guy was mentioning he always plays classical music, and I, I like classical music. Don't get me wrong, but I can't handle it at a, a, a long period of time. It's kind of like new country as well. I just can't handle that for long periods of time. So you won't find that in my car. You won't find me playing classical music just to kind of try to appease the passengers in some way like thinking like that would be a more pleasant environment for passengers I'm not sure it really matters um, but for me music is super important like I want to listen to music that I want to listen to so playing music is important how I do it is I have my iPod which is right here I have my iPod I play um, and uh, I hook this up to the auxiliary or Bluetooth usually I have it hooked up Bluetooth to the car and then my, I leave my phone from having to be kind of, kind of in that mess of like trying to do Pandora or anything like that, which is a little unfortunate because every once in a while I get somebody who asks me about Spotify or Pandora on, to play in the car, like as if I could just do it for them, but I don't have it set up that way. But I'm okay with it because I don't want to have it set up that because I like my music independent of my phone. I don't like. I don't like my music to stop if the phone rings and different things like that or whatever, so I just keep it independent of the phone. But that aside, that's kind of how I set it up in my car. When the kind of music I play, I do curate it to a degree in terms of what time of day I'm driving. And a couple, I have a couple, like it's the morning hours are more important to me than the evening hour, like the afternoon and evening hours in terms of what I'm playing because. I feel like I don't want to play anything too harsh in the morning uh, or abrasive in any way. So I've just because it just feels appropriate not to do that. And I'm not on the side of classical, like I just mentioned, I don't go that far with it. But there are some things that I, I some types of music I think work really well in the morning. And first of all, don't put me to sleep because I'm still trying to wake up. And I don't, one reason I don't like classical early is because it just put me back to sleep. I don't want that. So I try to find music that's not too abrasive but not too sleepy. It's like good middle ground. And 
like the perfect album that I played for a long time. Like just ex just play this album crazy amounts of time. So much so that it's like the whole album is in my top plays on my iTunes playlist. Um, and it's the um, first Aid Kit album. Oh, I forgot to write down the name of the album. Let me uh, look it up while I'm talking to you. Stay Gold. It's Stay Gold is the name of the album. It's a really great album. Like super awesome album. <clears throat> so. So that's a good one. And then a, an album that I've discovered recently was um, Lord Huron. Uh, I believe is how it's pronounced. Really good. This, the name of this album is um, Strange Trails. Works Again, works really good. It has the, the perfect amount of... It's not just too sleepy. Basically what it is. It's not abrasive, but it's not too sleepy. So I, those two albums I go to a lot. These days, I don't know. Something of that ballpark is what I listen to in the morning, typically. Um... And I'll, I'll run that until the afternoon, sometime around noontime, 11 or, or noontime. I'll, I'll switch it up. And then once the, once the afternoon hits, it's kind of, I just put my playlist on random. I just kind of either play it on random or, or, or put some play, other playlists I have. But it, it goes all over the place from hip hop to, I don't know, more rock and stuff to more poppy stuff, dance stuff. I mean, it's all over, really. I just, I don't have really any one genre. I don't tend to play a lot of metal or hard rock type stuff because I'm personally just not that into it so I don't play a lot of it but there are some things in my playlist that fall into that category and, and we'll play through sometimes. Um, but there is one, my my night album is um, that I play pretty frequently when it's dark and I'm driving around and, and, and doing it is the Anderson Pack album Malibu. Love that album, it's so good. And so yes there's like a lot of the music that I play will have swear words in it and such and depending on my passengers, most of my passengers are like my age or younger and so I feel pretty confident they don't care too much about swear words. Every once in a while I've had one, I've had one passenger in all my 5,000 rides that act specifically requested for me not to play any music with swearing in it. Um, so that was fine, whatever. Um, but other than that I just, I play what I like and it's funny sometimes, there's one song on the Anderson Pack album, called, um, I forget what it's called, but I'll tend to skip it because there's a really loud curse word. It comes in a place where they quiet the music down and they have a pause and then they say the word and it's really loud. So I tend not, and it's in this kind of, the, 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 it's not just like random in a way, there's a very specific intention about it as well that's kind of awkward so I tend to skip that song. I think it's called Silicon Valley is the name of the song. Um, I tend to skip that one just so that moment because it's like it's one of those things where you could be in a conversation and when you have that pause in the conversation Murphy's Law would just suggest that that's when that moment would happen in the song when the car is perfectly quiet and then that would happen and so I just kind of skip that song and then there's like other things like sometimes I get in such a good conversation with my passengers that I don't even recognize what music is being played, then I have some pretty crass stuff, like I have like the ant word and things like that, and it's like mega swear words, and I usually have, if the conversation is going good, I'll, I'll turn the volume down, and I'll realize like after way into the song that all these cuss words were just going off underneath our conversation, and I didn't notice, and I doubt the passenger noticed, but it just makes me go like, oh my gosh, that's an interesting thing that happened, but anyways, that's kind of just my take on music. That's what I do with music in the car. I do every once in a while somebody does say they like the music I chose. I have a pretty heavy rotation of Seattle bands that I play um, in my playlist. And sometimes people are like, oh, wow, this is interesting. I've never heard this. Who's this? And I'll be able to, you know, pimp out the kind of bands that I do on my podcast and things like that. So that's pretty fun. But um, other than that, that's... That's really it. Thanks a lot for watching once again. Um, this is my video about my rideshare experience. If you're digging on it and you want to become a driver, of course use my referral code ZIM200 and you and me, we both get a bonus. Right now it's pretty low in San Diego. It's like 175 or so. At least that's what they're offering me. Um, so yeah, so I don't know, probably by the summer. It was a little bit higher just like a month ago. But I guess it dropped again. So hopefully by the summer it'll start going up. So keep that referral code on hand if you decide to drive in the summer. I've noticed that 
my plays have been going up on my channel. Like some of these videos are getting viewed a lot more. And I think more, you know, people are thinking about what they're going to do for the summer and like the holidays are over. So they're, in, they're doing their research and, you know, they're coming across my videos. So, you know, it just it's kind of the ebb and flow of this job a little bit. So check that out. And also, if you want to follow along on this journey on a more daily basis, I do an Instagram account dedicated to it called Ride Your Zim. There it is. So check that out if you like. And then uh, one last thing. Is there any last things? I don't know. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. Thumb it up. And then if you think these videos are of value to the community, I'd love it if you share them with the greater community on any of your message message boards or like um, user groups and Facebook and whatnot say hey man this guy's got some good points about our job you know check it out or whatever I know there's a gazillion of us trying to do these kind of videos so hopefully you like mine but um feel free to watch all the others too they they all want your support just as much as I want your support so that's pretty rad so uh, you know thanks for watching peace and here's to long rides and big tips